Let's uh, find the Fourier series of this function, f of x equal to x, over the range from minus pi to pi. Let's look first at a uh, graph of this uh, function. So this is a, um, a linear function, f of x equals x. So it's the line here. And then this is um, between minus pi and pi. So the Fourier series of this function then is a um, periodic extension of this function. So outside of the minus pi and pi interval, it will repeat itself. So it would look like here and uh, here. So this is the periodic extension of this function. And the Fourier series then will represent this periodic extension. But all we're interested in is the function then between minus pi and pi. OK? So uh, what is the Fourier series of a function f of x? So um, let me write that down. So the Fourier series of a function f of x is equal to a constant term. And we usually write the constant term as 1 half a0 plus a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of cosines and sines. Uh, the a0 comes from the cosine. So we write a sub n cosine. And here the argument is n pi x over l. If the uh, Fourier series is periodic with period 2L, with period 2L, um, plus the sine, so B sub n sine n pi x over L. And then these coefficients, A's and B's, are determined from an orthogonality relation between cosine and sine. And if you do the math, you would get a sub n is 1 over l times the integral from minus l to l of f of x cosine n pi x over l dx. And b sub n is similar, 1 over l, integral from minus l to l f of x, but comes from the sine, so sine n pi x over L dx. OK, so this is the general formula for the Fourier series. So now our function is f of x equals x. And this is a uh, odd function, right? So f of negative x, right here, this value here, is negative uh, f of positive x, this value here right? So this is opposite sign. So uh, f of x is an odd function. So we make use of that. f of x equals x is odd. And uh, l, the periodicity uh, length, 2l is the periodicity length. So l goes, uh, is the function goes from minus pi to pi. So L is equal to pi, OK? So the fact that f of x equals x is an odd function um, means that the function can be represented only in terms of sine. So all these a coefficients are 0 for an odd function. Um, and furthermore, the fact that it's an odd function means we only need to integrate from 0 to L and we can multiply by 2, OK? So we can simplify um, the Fourier series for an odd function becomes a Fourier sine series. So let me write that. So for an odd function, then f of x is a Fourier sine series. So the constant term is 0. And we have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity b sub n sine n pi x over l, l is pi here, 
So it's just sine n x. Okay? And then these coefficients, b sub n, are 2 over l, which is pi, 2 over pi, the integral from 0 to l, which is pi, 0 to pi, of uh, the f function, which is x, right, times the sine, sine nx dx. Okay? So this is the, uh, the resulting Fourier sine series for our odd function. So the only thing left to do then is to do these integrals to compute um, b sub n. So let's do that. Um, <clears throat> we want to integrate by parts. We want to get rid of the x. So we uh, set u equal to x. And uh, dv then is equal to sine nx dx. So the derivative here, du is dx. And the integral of sine is minus cosine, right? So we have minus cosine nx. The derivative of this is a uh, is a sign and brings out an n so we have to divide through by n and that will be our v right okay so um, we have this integral then so bn is equal to uv so minus x cosine and x over n evaluated between 0 and pi minus v du minus minus becomes plus uh, v du so we have a 1 over n the integral from 0 to pi cosine and x dx and then um, that's the integral 0 to pi x sine and x dx and then don't forget we have this factor of 2 over pi so this whole thing gets multiplied by 2 over pi. Okay? So this first term, this surface term, uh, so we have our 2 over pi. Um, we have a, the pi limit here is minus pi cosine n pi Cosine n pi, when n is 1, 2, 3, 4, cosine n pi can be either 1 or minus 1. So it's not 0. So the first term here is minus pi cosine n pi over n. And then minus the lower limit at x equals 0, but we're multiplying by x here, so the lower limit here is 0. Okay, so the surface term is just this one. And then we have the integral of cosine. The integral of cosine is uh, sine, and we have a 1 over n. So 1 over n squared sine nx between 0 and pi. Okay? Now sine n pi, sine n pi, n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, is 0 right? Sine n pi is 0. So this term is 0, okay? So usually it's the other way around that the boundary term is 0 and the integral is not. But this case it's it's reversed. The integral here is 0 and the boundary term is not, okay? A little bit tricky. Um, so then what is uh, this boundary term? So the pi cancels and um, when n is uh, starts at 1, when n is 1, cosine pi is minus 1. So minus 1 times the minus sign becomes plus 1. When n is 2, cosine 2 pi is plus 1. So we get negative. So we can write this down, the pi cancels. So we end up with a 2 over n times, if n is odd, 
then this becomes plus 1 so 1 for n odd that means uh, 1 3 5 right and then if n is even this becomes 1 and it's minus so it's minus 1 for n even so that's 2 4 6 etc right Okay, so that's our BN coefficient. So um, then we can write down our Fourier series now. So uh, f of x, which is x, right, is then equal to the sum from n equals 1 to infinity BN sine nx, right? And we've determined the bn's, so let me just write it out. So we have a factor of 2 in front. And then the first term is n equals 1. So it's plus 1 over uh, n, which is 1. So the first term here will be sine x. The next term is minus. So it's minus um, sine 2x divided by 2. and then plus term, so plus sine 3x divided by 3, then minus sine 4x divided by 4, and you see the pattern here. Okay? And this Fourier infinite uh, series then will converge to x, uh, when x is between minus pi and pi.